go to jail, you walk. As of right now, yes, ma'am. Those are words no rapper ever wants to hear. And for Memphis rapper Glorilla, they hit her like a ton of bricks. Soon, she was going to say goodbye to her freedom as she was handcuffed and placed in the back of a police cruiser and off to serve her sentence. But how did it all start? Let me take you through what started as a simple traffic violation then turned into an embarrassing night for the rapper. Glorilla meets the law. All right, how, how many drinks did you have today? I'm cool. I ain't, cool. Yeah, I ain't drunk enough. The night was thick with anticipation as the streets of Georgia buzzed with the usual nocturnal activities. Among the sea of vehicles, one car stood out, a vehicle that would soon be the center of a media frenzy. Behind the wheel was none other than Glorilla, the rapper whose tracks have become anthems for many. But on this fateful night, the rhythm of her life was about to skip a beat. As the city lights blurred past, Glorilla approached an intersection. The traffic signal glowed a staunch red, a beacon in the night commanding all to halt. Yet, in a moment that would become the crux of the night's events, it is alleged that the rapper Rapper made a U-turn, an action deemed illegal at this signal. This maneuver caught the watchful eye of Georgia's patrolling officers, who are ever vigilant in their duty to uphold the law. So the reason I pulled you over today is because you made a you turn on a red light. The police cruiser's lights flared to life, painting the night with urgent reds and blues, signaling Glorilla to pull over. The rapper complied, bringing her vehicle to a stop at the side of the road. The officers approached, their figures silhouetted against the flashing lights. They explained the reason for the stop and asked for the standard documents, her driver's license. Um, I'm gonna need your driver's license. As the officer conversed with Glorilla, they reported observing signs that suggested impairment. Were you drinking tonight? I like that. The situation escalated from a mere traffic violation to a suspicion of driving under the influence, a serious offense that carries with it grave consequences. Apart from that, the officer also noted that she could smell weed from Big Glow's vehicle. Not only can I smell alcohol coming from your breath, but I can also smell marijuana coming from this car. As they spoke through the car window, Glow admitted to having an amount of weed on her that she can't go to jail for, and repeatedly told the officer that she was not inebriated. Glorilla, confronted by the officer, admitted to having consumed alcohol earlier that evening. However, she did not disclose the amount she had drunk, asserting confidently that she was in a fit state to drive. The officer, unconvinced by her assurances, proceeded to administer a series of field sobriety tests. But before they could start the test, Big Glow tried to wiggle out by using her celebrity status, asking the cop whether she knew who she was. I'm on your TV. Ma'am? I said, I'm on your TV. On my TV? Yeah. I don't know why Glorilla thought that would work, but it does remind me of Offset trying the same stunt when he was pulled over by cops. All right, you got your ID on you, sir? Yeah, but why am I being pulled over? Well, you can't get your ID first, sir. Why am I being pulled over? I know my rights. I'm a, yeah, sir. I'm famous, too. So okay, I, that's I, I know my rights. I, okay, I'm not going to give my ID to right. why I'm pulled over. Well, sir, I need your ID, and then I'll tell you, so I know who you are, and then we'll go from there. The cop then admitted to not knowing who he was, probably to show him that he did not care about his celebrity status. You said you're famous. Who are you? I'm Offset Migos. Who's that? Despite his fame, Offset soon found himself in handcuffs and off to jail, a fate that Big Glow would also suffer right after her sobriety tests. The night got even more embarrassing for the rapper as she stepped out of the vehicle with her pants open. All right, so step out and then walk to the front of my car, okay? I told you I hit the piece so off. That's why my pants, my flowers here. It's okay. Just moments earlier, the rapper had told cops that she had peed on her hand. I'm so hungry. Like, I peed on myself trying to get to a restroom. I got pee on my hand. And if you think this was embarrassing enough for the rapper, as she took her sobriety test, she asked the cops if she could pee on the side of the road. Yeah, I might as well let me pee on the side of the road. I gotta pee. The night would only get more embarrassing for Glorilla. Amidst the tension of the traffic stop and the sobriety test, an unexpected incident occurred. As the officer interacted with Glorilla, she noticed that her breast had slipped out from under her clothing. It was a wardrobe malfunction that added an additional layer of embarrassment to an already challenging situation. The officer informed her of the slip, and she quickly adjusted her attire. The tests began with an eye follow examination designed to check for the smooth pursuit of Glorilla's gaze as it followed a moving object. This was followed by the walk and turn test, where she was instructed to take nine steps in a straight line, heel to toe, turn on one foot, and return in the same manner. The one leg balance test required her to stand with one foot approximately six inches off the ground and count aloud until told to put her foot down. Each of these tests is intended to assess balance, coordination, and the ability to follow directions, skills that
that are often impaired by alcohol consumption. Despite her earlier confidence, Glorilla struggled to maintain her balance and failed to execute the tests as instructed. The officer noted that she had difficulty staying on her feet, swaying, and using her arms to balance, which are indicators of impairment. The final request was for Glorilla to take a breathalyzer test, a definitive measure of blood alcohol content. However, she reportedly refused to take the test further, complicating the situation. I would like to refer you. After failing her sobriety tests, Glorilla was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence. She was also charged with consuming and possessing an open alcoholic beverage container in the vehicle, as well as a separate traffic charge related to the initial U-turn. Handcuffed and taken into custody, the Memphis rapper was transported to jail just after 6 in the morning. The rapper was taken to jail and forced to pose for a mugshot, but was released a few hours later after she had sobered up, but now, before paying $1,956 for bail. In a move that surprised many, Glorilla posted a selfie on her social media accounts, striking a pose with a bottle of port balanced on her head and her tongue playfully sticking out. The image, which seemed to make light of the serious situation, was met with a wave of backlash. Accusations of trivializing drink driving and glamorizing dangerous behavior were levied against her by concerned fans and critics alike. Posting this after getting a DUI kind of crazy AF drunk driving ain't no joke, posted one fan. The backlash prompted a response from Glorilla, who took to Twitter to address the criticism. In a tweet, she expressed her frustration with the the judgment she faced, stating, We live in a generation full of fucking ass niggas. I'ma keep my little shit to myself, y'all got it. Her words reflected a sentiment of disillusionment with the court of public opinion and a desire to retreat from the controversy. This isn't the first time the rapper has found herself in controversy over a photo. Gloria Hallelujah Woods, alias Glorilla, was on the receiving end of wrath from a popular gang in Chicago. This is none other than the infamous street gang, the Gangster Disciples, or GDs. It all began after a photo of the female rapper and Brooklyn Drill rapper Fabio Foreign surfaced on the internet while she was on a trip in New York City. In the photo, the two rappers pose and throw down a gang sign. As it turns out, the pair were throwing down the controversial rake sign. For anyone not familiar with the gang sign, well typically those throwing up the rakes are members of the Black Disciples or Gangster Disciple Killers or just oppose those who are part of the Gangster Disciples. Glow finally took to her social media to respond to the backlash surrounding the photo. According to the rapper, she was unaware of exactly what she was doing in the photo. I thought he was telling me to throw up his gang. I did not know what it meant until after we took the picture, the rapper said. Her latest controversial arrest is being celebrated by her rivals. Enter Kayla Lillard, NBA star Damian Lillard's ex-wife. As the news broke, the internet was set alight once again. Kayla's earlier jest now seemed like a premonition, and her reaction to the arrest was swift and unapologetically mocking. The public's gaze quickly shifted toward Kayla Lillard's social media antics. Her Instagram story, which featured the free Glow Lillard caption, became a digital spectacle, drawing reactions that ranged from amusement to disbelief. The hashtag sister wife added fuel to the fire as it seemed to mock the rapper's previous advances towards Damian Lillard. So how did all this start? How did Glorilla, a rapper, and Kayla Lillard, a basketballer's ex-wife, cross paths and become foes? Well, before the flashing lights and the handcuffs, there was a moment that set the stage for the two to start beefing. It was during the star-studded NBA All-Star Game in February where Glorilla, the rap artist skyrocketing to fame, was seen in a series of photos with Damian Lillard, the basketball virtual with a smooth shot and a legion of fans. The images, electric with celebrity glamour, were just the prelude to Glorilla's audacious move. She took to Twitter, her words dripping with confidence. Who nigga this is? Cause I want him. She added in a follow-up tweet. Whoever she is can't whoop me, so I really don't give a fuck. Glorilla's tweets may have rubbed a basketballer's ex-wife, who has come out to publicly mock the Memphis rapper after her humiliating display on camera. Glorilla now joins the long list of rappers who have been put in handcuffs for drunk driving. From the new age rappers such as Quando Rondo to the legends such as Mac Miller, it seems DUIs are more common than not in the rap industry. Rappers arrested for DUI. All right, so Quando Rondo was arrested in Savannah, Georgia for driving under the influence and reckless driving. Quando Rondo's name hit the headlines once again after he was arrested in the early months of 2024. The rapper faces the music for a DUI and reckless driving incident that could jeopardize his freedom. Already out on bond for federal drug charges, Quando's latest run-in with the law sends shockwaves through the industry and his fan base. Although he was released on a $4,600 bond, it turns out that he was arrested for an incident that took place in 2023. Good morning, Savannah police are working to learn what caused a crash involving a Savannah rapper just weeks after he bonded out of jail. Well, police tell us that he was in a crash on the Truman Wednesday night. We know that another car was involved, but police have not said 
whether anyone was hurt. The date was July 19th, 2023, a day that would mark yet another controversial chapter in the life of Quando Rondo. The streets of Savannah, Georgia became the backdrop for an event that would escalate from a mere traffic mishap to a full-blown legal predicament. It was on Truman Parkway where Quando's vehicle collided with another, a fender bender that would typically warrant a simple exchange of insurance details. However, this was no ordinary accident, as the sirens wailed and the red and blue lights pierced the night. First responders found Quando Rondo in a state that pointed to something more sinister than just a car crash. The signs were clear, an overdose was suspected. Narcan, the emergency medication used to reverse the effects of an opioid overdose, was administered on the spot. Quando was swiftly transported to the Memorial Health University Medical Center, where he would not only receive medical attention, but also a slew of traffic violations that would add to his legal woes. The incident, now a DUI and reckless driving case, was a serious blow to the rapper, who was already out on bond for federal drug charges. The repercussions were immediate. Prosecutors seizing upon the opportunity moved to have his bond revoked, a motion that, if successful, could have seen Quando Rondo behind bars without the option of release. The Savannah rapper was arrested on June 16, 2023, alongside 18 other people, and was listed in a multiple-page indictment that included 49 counts of drug charges, gang affiliation, and the illegal use of cell phones. According to the Chatham County District Attorney's indictment, the drug deals occurred between October 2022 and June 2023. It is alleged that Quando told another defendant to negotiate a drug sale and then traveled to Macon, Georgia on June 4th to pay a weed supplier. Several other accomplices are said to have gone to Atlanta to pay for more weed. Quando was charged with two counts of conspiracy to violate Georgia's controlled substances law, one count of participating in criminal activity affiliated with a street gang, and one count of illegal use of a cell phone to facilitate a drug deal. The rapper is also being accused of violating the Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act for his role as a manager of the local set of the Rolling 60s Crips gang. And now, he has a DUI hanging over his head. But he is not the only drill rapper who has been charged with a DUI in the recent past. Chief Keefe has also found himself in similar circumstances. Less than two weeks after leaving rehab, Chief Keefe has been arrested for DUI. Miami Beach, a place synonymous with crystal clear waters, golden sands, and the pulsating rhythms of a city that never sleeps. It's here, amidst the backdrop of swaying palm trees and luxury cars, that the story of Chief Keefe's arrest unfolded, a narrative laced with suspense and the intoxicating allure of the high life gone awry. On a day that began like any other in the vibrant South Beach, the unexpected happened. Chief Keefe, born Keith Cozart, a figurehead of Chicago's drill music scene, found himself in the crosshairs of the law. It was Saturday, April 8th, when the young rapper's green two-door McLaren became the center of a police operation that would soon grip the headlines. As the traffic lights bled red on the sun-drenched streets, an incident occurred that caught the watchful eyes of Miami's finest. Cortez McElrath, a passenger in Keefe's vehicle, was observed in a suspicious exchange with Eddie Bryant, who was seated in an Altima trailing close behind. The substance passed between them, a bag with a green leafy essence, was all too familiar to the officers on duty. The plot thickened as McElrath, sensing the approach of the authorities, attempted a hasty retreat back to the safety of the McLaren. But fate had other plans. The police, swift and unyielding, held him at taser point, a clear sign that the situation had escalated beyond a simple traffic stop. Simultaneously, Chief Keefe found himself in a precarious position. With his hands moving inside the vehicle, the officers, taking no chances, aimed their tasers at him too. The atmosphere was electric, charged with tension, and the potential for things to take a turn towards the unpredictable. As reinforcements arrived, the drama reached its crescendo. The Altima's occupants were detained, and a search ensued, revealing the presence of weed. The stage was set for a legal showdown, with both Bryant and McElrath arrested and charged with possession. But it was Chief Keefe who would face the most serious accusation. After failing his sobriety test, the rapper was slapped with a DUI charge. His response to the officers was as defiant as the lyrics in his songs, It's okay, when you find weed in my urine, I'll just get my attorney to get my marijuana card. Chief Keefe told the cops. It was a statement that would echo through the courtrooms and into the annals of celebrity legal battles. This was not Chief Keefe's first brush with the law. The rapper's history with legal issues was as storied as his discography, with a previous arrest a few months prior for armed robbery and home invasion of his former producer, Ramzai the Great. Yet this latest incident in Miami Beach was about to take a different path, one that would lead to a plea deal and a chance for the rapper to avoid the cold confines of a jail cell. As the news broke, the music world watched with bated breath. Chief Keefe, a figure both celebrated and controversial, had found himself navigating the treacherous waters of the legal system. With eight different drugs found in his system, morphine, codeine, promethazine, THC, hydrocodone, norcodine,
benzene, dihydrocodine, and hydromorphone, the gravity of the situation was undeniable. In exchange for a no-contest plea to the felony DUI charge, the charge would be reduced to reckless driving. This pivotal moment in the proceedings marked a turning point, offering Chief Keefe a lifeline to grasp onto. The plea deal came with its own set of conditions and consequences. Chief Keefe would be placed on six months of probation, a period of time during which he would need to walk the straight and narrow or risk further punishment. Additionally, the rapper was tasked with completing 50 hours of community service, a mandate that would require him to give back to the community and reflect on the events that led him to this juncture. In the aftermath of the plea deal, Chief Keefe issued a statement that resonated with a tone of optimism and resolve. He expressed confidence in his ability to successfully complete the terms outlined in the deal. The rapper was eager to put the case behind him and redirect his focus toward his music and his fans. With new projects on the horizon, including his latest work at the time, Back from the Dead 3, Chief Keefe looked to the future with a renewed sense of purpose. Keefe is confident that he will successfully complete the terms outlined in the deal. He is looking forward to putting this case behind him and is focused on creating new music and promoting his latest project Back from the Dead 3, the rapper told the press. However, the rapper failed to turn over a new leaf as he ended up violating his probation by missing a subsequent court date. Chief Keefe was MIA from a court hearing relating to his DUI case, so the judge issued a $10,000 bench warrant. As a result, he was sentenced to 90 days in jail, followed by two years probation. Pittsburgh rapper Mac Miller has reportedly been arrested in connection with the DUI crash in California. According to TMZ, the incident happened around 1 in the morning Thursday in the San Fernando Valley. Miller allegedly crashed into a pole, causing it to fall over and fled the scene on foot with two other individuals. Police caught up with Miller at his home after running his license plate. Next on the list, the legendary Mac Miller. In the labyrinth of Los Angeles' streets, the early hours of May 17, 2018, witnessed a white Mercedes G-Wagon, a symbol of success and excess, careening out of control. Behind the wheel was Mac Miller, a prodigious talent whose life was a tap history of beats, rhymes, and inner demons. Days before, the world had watched as his two-year romance with pop sensation Ariana Grande dissolved, a breakup that played out in the unforgiving glare of the public eye. As the city slept, Mac's vehicle, a metallic beast, collided with the unyielding reality of a telephone pole, an impact so severe it sent the pole crashing down. The deployed airbags told a story of sudden violence, a stark contrast to the quiet streets of the San Fernando Valley. Mac and two companions fled the wreckage, a desperate escape back to the sanctuary of his home, but the law was swift and Mac was soon in handcuffs. His blood alcohol level more than doubled the legal limit. The arrest and subsequent $15,000 bail were just the surface ripples of a deeper turmoil. Friends like Clockwork, Mac's longtime DJ, spoke of a man wrestling with invincibility's illusion. This crash, a jarring wake-up call, was spun by Mac as a positive pivot point. He publicly declared it a necessary jolt, a chance to retreat and recalibrate. Yet privately, texts to friends painted a picture of a man downplaying the severity, branding the incident a result of a rough day. The dichotomy of Mac's public bravado and private vulnerability laid bare the struggle of a soul in conflict, a man dancing on the edge of a precipice. The aftermath of the crash rippled through Mac Miller's life, a life that was an open book to the public yet shrouded in personal enigmas. In the wake of the DUI, the world watched as Mac faced the consequences, not just legally, but emotionally and spiritually. He posted bail and walked free, but the chains of his actions were not so easily shed. He assured friends he was good, downplaying the crash as a mere stumble. This duality of public acknowledgement and private dismissal was a dance Mac seemed to know all too well. His social media, once a window into his world, went dark as he sought refuge from the scrutiny. As the days passed, concern for Mac's well-being grew. Ariana Grande, now entangled with comedian Pete Davidson, publicly implored Mac to take care of himself. Friends like Bun B reached out, only to be met with reassurances that belied the gravity of the situation. These were the red flags, the signs that perhaps Mac's battle with his inner demons was reaching a critical point. Tragically, the crescendo of this battle was a silent one. On September 7, 2018, Mac was found in his home, unresponsive, in a position that spoke of a final, desperate prayer. The call to 911 was too late. Mac Miller had succumbed to an accidental overdose, a counterfeit pill laced with fentanyl sealing his fate. The world lost not just a musician, but a young man who had become a mosaic of incredible talent and human vulnerability. We can only hope that Big Glow's DUI isn't connected to anything she may be going through in her life. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.